Um, hello, welcome to El Seminario. Today we're very excited to have Juan Caicedo. Uh, Juan is a mortgage investigator and assistant professor in the Department of Biostatistics and Medical Informatics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Juan's expertise is in computer vision, machine learning, and applications in computational biology. Thank you very much, Juan. Claudia, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to be here. Uh, I am very excited to share with uh, all of you uh, our work on recognizing cellular activity with microscopy imaging. Uh, this is our effort for advancing biology using machine learning. And my name is Juan Caicedo. And uh, uh, let's get it started. Uh, so the um, one of the overarching goals of uh, biological research is to observe biology in all scales possible. Uh, we know that uh, biology uh, has uh, a lot of structures in many different scales. So for instance, in this case, we can see uh, molecules and those are studied with uh, biochemistry and uh, uh, a collection of molecules, more specifically amino acids, form proteins, which are an important uh, piece of, uh, you know, uh, a structural piece of life. And we study proteins with proteomics. And the DNA is uh, uh, the central part uh, of information for replicating um, organisms and reproducing life. And we study the DNA with genomics. Uh, all the you know uh, activity of molecular uh, structures uh, form what is the basic unit of life, uh, which are the cells. And we study cells with cellular biology. And cells don't work alone. Cells like to, you know, hang out with other cells and come together to form more complex structures, which is what we observe in tissues, uh, which we currently study with the spatial biology. Uh, we want to, you know, understand all of those components which make up our body and also uh, make life possible. Uh, but we only can see, you know, up to this type of scale by eye. Uh, everything else is kind of unreachable by our uh, natural abilities of, uh, you know, observing biology. So uh, uh, we have invented technologies and we have invented, uh, you know, mechanisms and tools in order to be able to reach all of the other scales and understand how they interact and how they are structured uh, in order to give rise to life. And one of the most important uh, pieces of technology that we have invented for uh, observing biology at different scales is the microscope. The microscope uh, has more than 400 years of history, and it's been used to um, understand many of those pieces, and it plays an, an important role in uh, understanding and observing all of these components of life. My research is focused on understanding uh, cellular biology and spatial biology using microscopy imaging and machine learning specifically. And turns out uh, images have a lot of information. Microscopy images can collect information of all sorts. And there are many different ways in which we can see uh, uh, cells um, even, uh, uh, even under conditions that are not necessarily natural. Uh, for instance, in this case, we can see uh, cells organized in a tissue or maybe neurons as well. And we have a cancer cells over here, complete organisms and parts of the um, different uh, living organisms. And all of that uh, is possible by a combination of optics in the microscopes, chemistry in the way that we stain and color different parts of the cells and tissues, and uh, also technology, including you know microchips and sensors and so on. Uh, and all of that make possible the collection of these images, which are not just beautiful. They are also uh, super informative in terms of what we can measure in, uh, in, to understand the biology behind those organisms. And that is where uh, my research focuses on how we can measure, you know, what cells are doing. And turns out from an imaging perspective, we can think of cells or images of cells as if they were people. Uh, so imagine that, uh, you know, uh, we have images of 
faces instead of images of sales. So, uh, and, and we want to decode what people are doing. We are very good at reading uh, face expressions and we know, you know, when uh, people respond in certain ways. So if you treat a person with uh, candy, for instance, they are going to react in one way. But if you treat a person with spices or something else, they may react in different ways. And turns out that is the same that happens with cells as well. We can make interventions in the lab in order to make cells react in different ways. For instance, they can react to uh, drugs or chemical compounds, or we can also make genetic interventions and you know, change the way in which they are structured. And we can read what is the uh, response of the cells to those treatments using imaging. Uh, and the same happens for how cells organize. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, cells don't work alone. So they like to team up and uh, uh, have a, you know common goals and they structure uh, together in order to um, create more complex behaviors and coordinate life at different scales. And this is pretty much the same that happens when we observe images of people also working together. Uh, even with a single picture, we can understand what the people behind the scene uh, are trying to do. And we can imagine and guess, well, they are communicating in this way. Maybe they have certain goals. Maybe this is a moment in which something is going to happen. Uh, the same happens with images of tissues. When we see a collection of cells, uh, it's just a moment in time in which they were working together towards, uh, you know, uh, achieving certain goals. And we want to uh, understand that from images alone. Uh, we think that we can decode the way in which cells can communicate and organize uh, using imaging technologies. And it turns out in, uh, you know, for... Uh, the analysis of images, uh, machine learning has played an important role during the last decade or so. Uh, we currently have technologies that allow us to uh, detect faces in images like this. Even using our phones, we have uh, algorithms that are able to recognize uh, people in pictures. And we have also, you know, the ability to identify the types of activities that people do in certain situations using just uh, computer vision and machine learning techniques. So uh, what we want to do is to use or leverage the same type of artificial intelligence behind those algorithms in order to analyze images of cells. Because we know that uh, the cells also react to you know, different interventions and they like to uh, express uh, you know, their, their, uh, their state and their activity in different ways under the microscope. And uh, we aim to measure all of those different expressions that they have uh, and make of that quantitative data that can allow us to um, uh, understand better diseases and maybe design better treatments as well. So what we aim to do is to transform the images in, in a way uh, that can be uh, useful for uh, doing biological research. So uh, one of the uh, current trends in machine learning research and also uh, in, uh, you know, uh, biological research uh, is uh, focused on big data. So uh, we collect uh, lots of uh, data points uh, associated to cells, including, uh, you know, the genomics information, proteomics, and imaging is no different. We can also collect a lot of images for uh, different types of uh, conditions and so on. And uh, what we want to do is to learn how cells behave and how they have different types of behaviors under different conditions by collecting millions of images from studies that are actually publicly available. And some of the studies that are also underway here at the University of Wisconsin and the Morgan Institute. So this is one of our uh, current goals in order to, you know, uh, create algorithms that are able to decode what cells do. We are going to need a lot of data. So uh, this is part of our current effort uh, on collecting images. And I encourage, uh, you know, other scientists that may have images of cells to 
uh, collaborate with us. We would like to look at your images and you know help you also decode what they have. And uh, in order to apply machine learning algorithms, we also need a high throughput computing. Uh, the algorithms that are behind those methods for extracting information from images are very computationally expensive and they require uh, a lot of uh, computing power in order to transform those images into something that we can use for uh, making sense of the biology behind the experiments. Uh, so uh, we are also uh, fortunate to have the Center for High Throughput Computing here in campus and we are collaborating with them uh, to collect the millions of images that we are interested in analyzing and also in creating software that can look at those uh, images automatically. Uh, and our goal is that the machine learning algorithms that we run at large scale with millions of images are going to be able to uh, you know, teach us something about how cellular biology works and how spatial biology works as well in order to support image-based discoveries. So by looking at multiple types of studies simultaneously, uh, we aim to um, learn something that we can use uh, for uh, you know, understanding disease or maybe designing better treatments. And this is part of the progress that we have made so far in terms of uh, collecting multiple types of microscopy images. Uh, there are many data sources or many data repositories where scientists from all over the world deposit their images after you know certain types of experiments. And that includes the bioimage archive uh, that has many types of uh, imaging studies. Uh, and from there, we have collected 30 studies, which is about 5 million images and 10 terabytes of data uh, and we now uh, have them you know, ready to be processed. Uh, we are also using the image data repository. Uh, this one has many more studies and we collected 70 studies from there uh, with about 20 million images, which represent 75 terabytes of data. And we are also using the uh, images produced in the Jump Consortium Cell Paint, uh, sorry, Jump Cell Painting Consortium, uh, which is uh, focused on drug discovery those images were collected from 12 different laboratories uh, and they represent about 40 million images in total, making 120 terabytes of data available for uh, you know, understanding how cells respond to different types of chemicals. So we are interested in looking at, uh, at all of those studies jointly, uh, as opposed to uh, the previous type of uh, analysis that are done in independent studies individually and creating you know, techniques that can look at uh, those images separately. Uh, what we want to do is to you know, combine all of those and look at what are the relationships between all of those studies and what we can learn across multiple types of imaging techniques. We believe that there are many things in common in the same way that you know, uh, language uh, is uh, very diverse around the world, but nevertheless, all of them are uh, human languages and we can learn many things about the culture and the uh, types of expressions. Uh, I think there is a lot of information here jointly among multiple imaging studies that we can extract automatically using machine learning models. And here is kind of a, a visualization of some of the images in those studies that I mentioned before, uh, they represent very diverse set of uh, microscopy images, uh, including uh, cells at very high resolution with very specialized uh, you know, type of probes. Um, and uh, we see all sorts of uh, cell types and organisms and microscopy techniques and magnifications and so on. So all that variation uh, is uh, very uh, interesting. And uh, our goal is to try to understand um, uh, you know, how cells behave under all of those uh, microscopy conditions. Uh, in, a, in a way, this is sort of a sample of the microscopy universe that other scientists have been able to capture in their, you know, independent experiments. And we are bringing all of that together to, you know, create the big picture of what is uh, the possible, uh, you know, microscopy universe that we can measure and that we can serve under the microscope. And we are also using the so-called uh, vision transformer networks 
for understanding all that uh, image variation. Uh, so it turns out a transformer networks is one of the uh, state-of-the-art techniques for machine learning. And uh, you may be familiar with transformers um, uh, which are used in the uh, GPT models. Uh, in fact, the T in GPT stands for transformers, uh, which is a type of neural network that likes to see sequences of information. So in natural language, we have a sequence of words and every sentence is you know, just one word after the other. Uh, in images, we have information organized in a 2D space and uh, we kind of artificially split the image in a way that we can form a sequence to facilitate the uh, transformation of that information uh, using transformers. And the main operation that a transformer network does is the self-attention, uh, which is basically trying to decode what pieces of information are related to each other so we can compute certain statistics and use that information to make inference about the content of the image. So uh, this is the way in which we are trying to look at a massive amount of microscopy images in order to uh, understand um, differences in cell morphology and cell phenotypes. And uh, if the transformer network is the tool that we are using to look at the images automatically, we need to train that uh, neural network in some way. Uh, and usually neural networks are trained with uh, supervision, which is uh, you know, uh, a way of teaching the network to do something, or for instance, to recognize faces. And we have to tell you know, this, uh, uh, fic uh, th this photo of this person is uh, for instance, Juan, and we have to make the association in order to uh, help them recognize uh, who, is, um, who is the person in the picture. Uh, in the case of cells, unfortunately, uh, there are many things that we don't know, and we cannot uh, try to teach a neural network something that we don't know. So we use a different way of training the neural networks, which is called self-supervision. So in this case, the neural networks uh, are working together. So we put two networks, one which is called the teacher and another one which is the student, and we put them together to collaborate in trying to solve a puzzle about the images that we have. Uh, and in that way, they uh, they are able to recognize certain patterns that you know happen uh, very frequently in images, uh, and that is useful information for us to understand what the the models are seeing as different across different types of images. We have used this type of technology, uh, including the transformer networks, with the self supervision strategy uh, to decode what is you know, the organization of certain cells in one data set, which is called the Allen Cell Explorer. Uh, and without any supervision, without any you know, uh, 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 pre-processing or additional guidance, the machine learning uh, algorithm was able to uh, recover the structure of the images and group images in meaningful uh, groups uh, that are associated to the underlying biology uh, of the experiment. Every point that we see here in this plot corresponds to one single cell. And uh, the, the protein that the cell expresses um, uh, has been you know, part of the experimental design. So uh, cells that have the same type of protein uh, are grouping together. And this is what we observe uh, in this you know, uh, diagram that was produced with the um, self-supervised learning um, strategy that I was explaining before. So uh, with that, uh, what we have is uh, a kind of a strategy to you know, bring together uh, images um, from different experiments, uh, because we believe that images encode very rich uh, type of phenotypic information. Uh, and uh, by learning from across multiple experiments, we hope that uh, we're going to learn something that is more uh, you know, fundamental to all uh, possible uh, imaging uh, experiments. And by doing so, we hope that, uh, you know, we can help more labs, you know, like as, as opposed to specializing on one type of image, we want to see if we can learn something that is more generic. So whatever models or whatever lessons we learn uh, from analyzing a large amount of images, we hope that that is going to be transferable and generalizable uh, to other microscopy experiments in the future. 
Uh, we are using machine learning to identify useful features, and we believe that this type of technology inspired in computer vision and machine learning is going to have multiple applications in biology uh, for understanding uh, phenotypes and cell states and uh, spatial biology as well. Uh, so with that, uh, I want to you know, thank the funding sources, including the Mortgage Institute and NSF. Also, I want to thank my collaborators in the research computing uh, group, including Brian Bockelman, Justin, and Andrew. Uh, our collaborators at Boston University, the Broad Institute, the University of Helsinki, Columbia University, and Meta AI. And of course, all of the members of my lab uh, who are making all of this possible and are the real heroes behind all of this type of analysis. Thank you so much for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions.